The next step on diagnosing the A4 Quattro will be to check the compression. So I'll show you guys all the ins and outs and exactly what we're gonna need. So we're gonna need this panel remover tool so it's just to make sure you don't damage the panels and then also we are gonna need this compression setup. So this is actually very handy because we get all different sizes for the spark plugs that we are going to need. We get the gauge. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one point of it inside to the gauge and the other point into the spark plugs. What we're going to do is we are going to pull the fuse, make sure there's no fuel going to the engine and then we're going to check the compression on each piston. So let's get started. So we are going to have to pop the fuse. So before we do that, I just want to show you guys something real quick. So when we come into the car, I'm going to put the key in and I'm going to press it in once. So when I do that, the car's ignition is going to come on. Also, the fuel pump is going to prime. So I want you all to listen to the prime. Here we go. It is very soft, but I do hope that you guys heard it. So that means our fuel pump is working. So what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to remove the fuse. So I'm actually very lucky the fuse is sitting right over here. And having this tool is just amazing. Okay, there goes the first one, second one, third one. Okay, so right over here, it gives us a complete list of everything that's on here. Come on, focus. Maybe if you guys do need to see this as well for your own Audi A4, it doesn't want to focus. There we go. So let me just put that down. If you do go and look over here, fuel pump diesel is number three of the fuel fuse carrier brown. So looking over here on the side, here's our brown carrier and it said it was number three, which is this one. Let's just go and confirm one two three there we go so also it's a 25 amp fuse okay let's go you go we're gonna pull it out perfecto so we're just gonna put this somewhere safe for now looking good and just to make sure that was the fuse we're gonna insert our key we're gonna let it prime again nope there's no priming so what we can do to make sure that the car let me just quickly switch it off before it beeps all the time. <laughs> so one thing we can do to get all the fuel out of the system is actually going, starting her up. Okay, so now we just wait for her to die. And she just died all by herself. So now the car doesn't have any fuel. It is actually really important to make sure that your car doesn't have any fuel in because that fuel is actually just going to go up the tube to the gauge. So you just actually want pure compression, no fuel. So let's go to the engine bay. So now we have to prepare the engine for the gauge test. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the cover, we're going to remove all four coils, and we're going to remove one spark plug at a time. So then we're going to use the gauge, put it in that spark plug, then afterwards we're going to remove it, remove the next spark plug, put the gauge in, put the other spark plug back in, and just make sure that all the other three spark plugs remains there for the, crank, for the crankcase pressure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do it on all four of them. Also when doing this, I do recommend having two people. While one can stand here in front of the car, keeping an eye on the gauge, while the second person is actually inside of the car, turning the car on and off. It's just gonna be much better instead of you running around, maybe the, the gauge might drop a little bit and you might actually miss the actual reading. So we are going ahead loosening the first spark plug. So one way to get these spark plugs out for the people that do not know, let's just quickly turn it all the way. Okay, I believe it's loose. It's laying one side, so that means it is loose. So one of the easiest ways to get them out is by actually taking your coil, just dropping it down there slightly, just wiggling it down until you can feel it catches it. So there we go. So there is our first spark plug. So now we gotta make sure that the actual part we are gonna be turning into the engine must be the same size as the spark plug. So this one should work. So what we're gonna do is just slide this bottom part up, push it in and lock it up. So what we're gonna do is, my fiance is gonna start the car. We're gonna keep an eye on this lever. Once this lever moves to a point where it's not actually going any further, that is where we're gonna tell her to stop cranking the engine. Okay, so whenever you're ready, you can go. Hold in brake. 
Oh, you don't have the car key? <laughs> Stop. Okay, so you guys saw it, it stopped now at 110, but it was about 120. So that is for the first person piston, let's go to the rest. Moving over to the second piston, you can crank her. Stop. All right, so it stopped a little bit higher, but it was averaging about the same. So we're gonna go to piston number three. Moving over to piston number three, you can crank her. Stop. There we go. Okay, so this one was also averaging around the same area. Okay, so let's go to piston number four. Moving over to the final piston, you can go ahead and crank her up. Stop. Okay, perfect. So that means all of them are okay. Just a quick tip, if you are done with the piston, just click that button in, it's gonna blow all the air out. So the first time we checked, piston number one was the lowest. So I just wanna check it one more time. You can crank her up. Stop. There we go, so all four of them are exactly similar. So this does say that we don't have a piston ring problem. Our valves are sitting because it is maintaining the pressure inside the engine. So let's go ahead and put everything back in. I am truly happy with the outcome. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the fuse back, I'm gonna show you how to prime it and we are gonna start her up again. So what we're gonna do is we are firstly gonna put the fuse back in slot number three kind of difficult to put it back like this okay so now we're gonna take the key again we're gonna insert it and we are not gonna start it we are just gonna press it in listen for the prime let me just close the door it's gonna make a lot of squeaking noises are you guys hearing the fuel pump okay we're gonna take it out again we're gonna put it back in to make sure we get the fuel pressure up Okay, there was the second prime and it sounded much better. So now we're gonna put it back in for the third time. We're gonna hold our foot on brake and start her up. There we go, straight away she has been started up. So the engine code was just me pulling out the fuse. So now that she's idling very smooth, almost like nothing happened, we can go and switch her off. So there you go, that is the easy way on how to check your car's compression. So if you did find it useful, helpful, informative in any way, please make sure to drop a big like. If you'd love to support the channel, hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe. If you want to see any other video, hit the icons on the screen. But for now, peace out.